officer. I am delighted to have this opportunity to be here and say a few things. I, uh, I understand that, um, well, I, I must say, the honors that have been uh, paid to me are, are, would be mistaken on this particular day if it were not made clear that it really goes to the, uh, the office that I represent rather than anything in particular that I've done. Nobody ever expected me to be president. When I, when I was a boy, I, I was raised to farm work. I never knew that I would end up in the fix I'm in now, <laughs> that's for sure. She must be a Democrat, you think? <laughs> that's all right, Democrats are welcome. But um, I did know this when I was a boy, that I lived in a country where any one of us can make himself. Now, my father, I told you, was a farmer, and I was raised to farm work. Now, you, you got to be strong to be a farmer. And I was pretty strong when I was a boy. You know, I feel my muscle. <laughs> but I discovered when I was a boy, are you scared of me? Is this a problem? I'm just a Republican. We're safe. <laughs> I... I knew when I was a boy that there's more than one way to be strong. I was amazed when I was a boy at the power that is found in mere words. Going to a, a religious service and, and, and seeing a, a hardened sinner get religion and, and swear off drinking and cussing and carrying on. And, um, and as a boy, my mom was was a, uh, we attended a Baptist church and the scripture says the whole world was made by the word of the Almighty. Or sometimes we go to court and we'd watch these trials and some fellow might be near convicted of, of, of a terrible crime and his life hung in the balance and, and some lawyer just pacing back and forth, crafting and, and honing words, save his life. I was fascinated by things like that. When I was a boy, I, I loved books, and words. I liked reading them. I liked speaking them. <laughs> I used to practice giving speeches when I was just a boy. No idea what I was going to end up doing. I liked writing them. I'd spend hours shaping my letters just so, rhyming them. Abraham Lincoln is my name. With my, my pen, I wrote the same. I wrote it both in haste and speed and left it here for a full read. <laughs> Nobody ever thought Abraham Lincoln would be president. But there's certainly power in words. I, I want my boys to have an appreciation, as I did. My boys love to hear me tell stories. When we got to Washington, well, it was still alive then, and there was a foursome, Bud and Holly Taft and uh, Tad and... William Lincoln. And they'd gang up on me. Paul, tell us a story. Tell us a story. And I would. And they liked engine stories. They liked all sorts of stories. But I liked to read to them. I remember, in fact, I have a copy here. When I was a boy, one book, I had that thing. I read that so often. And I have a copy, not the same one, but a copy. Aesop's Fables. I read that, same, that book so often when I was a boy, I could have quoted the blame thing from, from memory. There were several of them like that. I recall the preface to one, 
Do you see the way the fisherman doth take to catch a fish? What engines doth he make? Behold how he engages all his wits, his snares and lines, hooks, angles, nets, but fish there be. And on went for it. I, I loved reading. Let, let me read a little bit. I was reading this to the boys. One of Aesop's fables. There's, there's just so many good ones in here. I, I'll read you this one. Tad, he took a fancy to this. It's called The Lion and the Mouse. Did you ever hear that one? The story of the lion and the mouse? Oh, you like this. This is how it starts. Now, they all start once upon a time. A good story always starts once upon a time. Once upon a time, a lion was awakened from sleep by a mouse running over his face. Would you like to wake up with a mouse on your nose? Neither did the lion. And it says, rising up in anger, he caught him. I reckon by the tail, wouldn't you think? And was about to kill him. Isn't that what the lion would do? He'd eat him, wouldn't he? And the book says, and the mouse piteously entreated and said, No, spare my life. If you will only spare my life, I will surely repay your kindness. And you know what the lion said? Ho, ho, ho! And he roared, I will not spare this little morsel. And the mouse said, Please, please, Mr. Lion. And so the lion laughed. Ha, ha, ha! Let him go. Ditch! And the mouse scampered away. But it happened shortly thereafter. The mouse, the, the lion was asleep again. And some hunters came along. And they threw ropes over him. And they tied him fast. And they went off to get the cage. And the, the lion was caught. And he roared. Help me. but he couldn't get away. He was caught. And the little mouse would scamper away. I'm getting off the trail here. He heard the lion, and he scampered up, and he said, I'll save you. And he went to the ropes. He got out his sharpest pair of teeth. And he chewed right through. That's not what it says in the book. <laughs> I better get back to my script. And then the mouse said, you ridiculed the idea of my ever being able to help you, not ever expecting I could because I was only a little mouse. And the moral of the story is never underestimate a little mouse. You know what? Tad's only a little boy. But he took that to heart. After the war started, Tad found ways to be a help. When people want to see the president and they can't get in, he'll go all the way to the end of the line sometimes.